Jeremy Jauncey is the British founder and CEO of the world's largest social media travel organization, Beautiful Destinations. The entrepreneur recently made a stop off in Hong Kong to catch up with the multi channel network VS Media, who are helping Beautiful Destinations build on several high profile Asia campaigns and extend their footprint in China. Campaign met with Jauncey at Hong Kong's fashionable Sugar Balcony Bar to talk about the company's strategy. So I'm here with uh, Jeremy Jauncey, founder of Beautiful Destinations. And can you give us a kind of introduction to what you do at Beautiful Destinations? How yes. do you describe your yes, agency in my course. office? Okay, so there are two parts to the business. Um, the agency which you mentioned is really the kind of driving force of what we do, which is sitting down with brands, learning some of their challenges, and then helping them trying to fix those challenges through content. Okay. And largely video. Video is a very, very big part of what we do. So we go in, we sit down, we learn what they're kind of facing, and then we shoot videos and also photos to help them to answer those, uh, those challenges. Yeah. The second part of our business, um, which actually more people know us for, is our, is our media brand, which is our, our audience on social media. Um, so there's over 16 million people across the world on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, that come to us um, every day to be inspired about travel and tourism and hopefully get sort of positive stories um, yeah. about the world. Um, we do also have a big presence uh, here in China now through um, our China partner VS Media who've helped us launch here and actually build out uh, first on Weibo. So we have almost uh, almost 2 million people following us on, on Weibo um, and that's, that's, that's growing sort of very quickly. Yeah. On the China side, it feels like for us so much of the rest of the world, certainly the Western world that we're in, hasn't seen China mm. and knows so little about China. Yeah. And with 100 million outbound Chinese tourists a year, they are also an incredibly attractive market for Western countries and Western brands to mm. attract to what they're doing. And so if we can be that conduit between the two, I think we, we build something really meaningful and really, really valuable. Yeah. So what are the kind of secrets to keeping it interesting? Um, it's very much focused on positivity. It's very much focused on the idea that the world is an amazing place. And okay. despite so much of today's media stories being negative and being focused on you know, building walls and sending people home and isolationism, actually the world is an amazing place if you get out and you explore. Yeah. Um, so our outlook on that content is, is very positive. It's a celebration of people, it's a celebration of color. And it's essentially, it's about having something that looks beautiful. <laughs> I think it's Is there more to it than that? How does, yes, what's the mathematical side to it? Okay, that's a great perspective. question. So there's two ways. One is um, having a unique perspective and that is um, understanding a slightly different way to tell a story than perhaps it has been told in the past. So the Eiffel Tower, it's been shot a million times, 10 million times. Um, when we go to shoot a landmark like that, we try and find a unique viewing point or a unique way to use light or a unique perspective or story around that. Um, particular landmark to make it differentiated. Okay. Um, we do also have a team of data scientists within our business and yeah. those individuals analyze um, what we call the digital the digital fingerprints of that image. So the color, the yeah. hue, the brightness, um, the percentage of person versus landscape, all of those mm -hmm. elements actually make a particular uh, image unique and what we will then try to do is analyze the performance of any content that we post under those parameters to work out why it was successful and how we can do more of that. So when we sit down with brands, we're always explaining you can use data from seeing how your audiences respond on social media to then inform your wider marketing decisions. So you work with Hong Kong Tourism Board. Yes. Can you kind of talk us through a campaign that you did with them? Yes, of how course, of course. So they were actually our first ever client. So the Hong Kong Tourism Board was our first client. We first were, ever, not only in Asia. First, so first ever content client ever. Okay. Yeah, right. ever. Uh, so then we worked with the Macau Tourism Board. Um, we worked with the Philippines Tourism Board. So we had a, we had a really good footprint yeah. um, in Asia to start with. They came to us with the challenge of actually having really good photo assets when we first started. So two years ago, um, they didn't have as strong uh, a footprint in photo assets of Hong Kong. And so Hong Kong being one of the most iconic places in the world, been shot a million times, yeah. the challenge was could we come in and tell a differentiated story of a place that, that was so iconic and had been shot so many times. So the team came in, they did that. Um, it proved to be very, very successful. Mm. It then started content assets on social media which then moved into content assets that went into email marketing, okay. which then went from content assets into some of the display advertising, then onto their website advertising, then into their magazine and print billboards, and that's actually how our most effective clients right. work. They graduate all the way, all the way through. And why do you think that video is the kind of, such a big part of what you do? Um, I think Mark Zuckerberg said relatively recently that 
he was predicting that video was going to be as big a mega trend as, as mobile was. And I think Facebook was estimating that in the next five years or so, the whole of the platform will be completely video dominated. People go wrong a lot with video, with producing content on video. Are yes. there a lot of rules that you've learned about what works? Definitely, what definitely, works? definitely. So I think traditionally people thought of video as being one hero piece of content. There was maybe a three, four, five minute sort of branded video and lots of brands would invest a lot of time and money building those content assets. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing now is to be effective on video, you need to have different content types for different platforms. Okay. So six second pre-roll ads for YouTube, six second in ads, sorry, in content ads for Facebook, 30 seconds Instagram ads, they're all very, very different. Um, you have vertical video units for Snapchat and Instagram advertising, you have horizontal video units for other platforms. So it is, it is very important to be able to tell stories across all of those videos, uh, yeah. video units. We're mm -hmm. pushing a lot into um, sort of short form storytelling through social TV channels. Okay. So lots of the, the social networks are now moving into creating their own short form TV series um, mm -hmm. and we're doing absolutely the same. So we shot our first series actually here in China. Um, so it's a, the idea of Beautiful Destinations coming to China we went to, um, to Sichuan and, and VS mm -hmm. Media put together all these different experiences that we filmed with local KOLs that they represent. Um, yeah. And it was just a different way of telling a story. Brand is, this is how you've kind of monetized your whole bit, company basically. Yes. And um, why do they want to collaborate with you rather than produce their own stuff? What's kind of interesting? Yeah, them? so um, one element is scale. We have the ability to create massive amounts of content very quickly through mm -hmm. our network of ambassadors. Um, the second is, is we feel quality. Um, we, we do know how to tell stories for a mobile form factor to engage a young millennial audience and, and certainly brands are trying to, trying to find out ways to do that. Yeah, and how did you make it different? So I think again, it comes down to the stylistic elements yeah. that, that make Beautiful Destinations sort of who we are. So we're very much a celebration of color. So mm -hmm. it's very vibrant, it's very colorful. And we also use very fast transitions and very unique ways to actually move from different elements of our stories within the content and that, that sort of makes us unique. I think also the way we use sound editing um, that also gives us a very unique sort of style and so if you look at beautiful destinations on social media mm. hopefully you'd see a continuous theme that defines us as a, as a brand and that's a lot of the things that other brands will then buy into. When you do work with uh, a partner collaborator mm -hmm. I mean, do you ever find that the audience responds in a, in a sort of negative way? Do yes, you ever, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So in the early days, we learnt um, some very harsh lessons about taking branded content from third party partners, putting it onto our channels mm -hmm. and actually seeing it perform very, very badly. Okay. Um, so many of the clients, we go through sort of an education process of trying to understand if we, if we really know what their challenge is and what they're trying to fix, mm -hmm. then we can come up with creative ideas in our style to fix it. If we just say, okay, you know, pay us the money and give us your ad and we'll post it, then it, it just doesn't work. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. I'm Olivia Parker and this is Jeremy Jauncey of Beautiful Destinations.